Welcome to a video on the KRC band pass filter. Alright, so we will be looking at the Q factor for band pass filters and then typical band pass filter designs in terms of equations, circuits, some choices that we can make and some tweaks that we can make in the filter. And lastly, we will do some design problems with simulations included. Okay, so typically for a bandpass filter, you will define a bandwidth and a center frequency. So those are the two specifications that you will be working with and that will give you the Q factor of your bandpass filter. And the Q factor gives us our sharpness right here and our bandwidth around our center frequency. Right. So the KRC bandpass filter, we have a non-inverting configuration right here and then an active filter input on the non-inverting and we have a little bit of positive feedback. So this does have a chance to turn into oscillator. Right, so the equations from this, we have the gain from our resistor A and resistor B. We have a final gain of this amplifier, which is related to this gain and then the component choices in our positive feedback network here. Our center frequency and then our Q factor. Now here is a lot of components um, and that is not nice to work with if you want to do a design. So the best option is to select some of the components to be the same value. Right. So RB can be used to adjust the Q factor and R1 can be used to adjust the center frequency. So this resistor right here, if your frequency is a bit off, you can tune it. And this resistor right here, if your bandwidth is too wide or too narrow, you can adjust RB's value. So if you're struggling to get things right, remember that you can just adjust these two components in your design. Right. So if our Q factor is larger than the root of 2 divided by 3, and this is a typical case, or else you can just use a wideband filter. We can choose all our resistors to be the same value and all our capacitors to be the same value. Then the final gain of your amplifier becomes K over 4 minus K. So, you don't typically have control over the final gain since you will be more worried about the center frequency and the bandwidth. Okay, so F0 and Q. So we need some different way to deal with our final gain, which I will show you a bit later on. So a typical design, if we made all the capacitors and the resistors the same values, is root of 2 over 2 pi RC for our center frequency, which is much simpler than this monstrosity that we had here. And the Q factor becomes root of 2 over 4 minus K. Now, note, if K moves towards 4, okay, your Q factor will become infinite. And at the infinite Q, this filter will turn into oscillator. I will do a later video on how to turn one of these into an oscillator. Right, so F0 here is your first design equation and Q right here is your second design equation which leads you to K1 plus RB over RA. And lastly you can just determine what the final gain of your filter is by applying this equation. So, let's do a problem. We want to design a 10 kHz bandpass filter 
for a bandwidth of 1 kHz, so that is quite a wide band. Use 10 nanofarad capacitors in your design. Calculate all the components. Use E192 resistor values for the best accuracy. If one of these resistors is a bit off, your frequency will be off or your Q factor will be off by a lot. And it can cause you some issues. Okay, lastly, calculate the final gain of a filter and then redesign for 100 Hz bandwidth. Simulate the problem. So, pause the video there and see if you can design using these four equations this bandpass filter. Right, the solution. So, first we calculate the Q factor. So, we take our center frequency divided by the bandwidth and we get a Q of 10 which is larger than root of 2 over 3. Choose all our capacitors the same, all our resistors the same, and choose your capacitor 10 nanofarads. You always choose the capacitor first. Right, from there we can calculate the resistor value which is required. So that is 2.25 kilo ohms, and the E192 is 2.26 kilo ohms right there. Then we take our Q factor and we figure out what the gain of resistor A and B should be for our inverting configuration and that gain is 3.8586. This is really 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 close to 4 already so this has a high chance if you pick a wrong resistor value here to actually become an oscillator. Right. Choose RA 1 kilo ohm and RB will be 2.8586 kilo and the closest is 2.84 kilo ohms. Plug this into the K over 4 minus K equation and you will have a 27.6 decibel gain for this filter. Right, now for the bandwidth of 100 hertz. We redesign the Q factor and this will only have effect on K that we have here. Right, so there is a marginal difference between the two gains. Right, so only RB gets adjusted and that becomes 2.98 kilo ohms. And that is kind of a limit um, here already for, for resistors. If this just goes up by 20 ohms, we will have oscillations happening. And this gain is almost 200 volts per volt or 46 decibels. So let's jump into the simulation of this and let's see how accurate these values were. So I set this up as a filter and I tweaked these resistor values to 2.24 already um, because the center frequency was a bit off and that is due to the choice of components. Um, you're always going to play around in the simulation to get this to work perfectly and then RB I made a parameter so that we can see both at the same time. So if we run this, there is our band pass, and it's centered on 10 kilohertz. This one here at 26, this one at what was that for, so supposed to be 46 decibels right there. So there is our band pass filter, and you can see the sharpness of this as a Q factor increased. As we saw in the previous problem is we didn't have any control over the gain. So we can calculate the gain of that filter and then we can 
convert resistor 1 into a voltage divider to basically correct the gain on the input side of the amplifier. So the old gain, as it will be called now, we could calculate it and then take the incoming voltage where the most will be sitting over resistor 1B as a voltage divider. So the new gain, the gain that we want, can be voltage divided from the old gain. Right, and the relation of these two resistors is also a parallel combination. So the resistor that we got when we were calculating the frequency is the parallel combination of R1B and R1A. So if we split these equations so that we have R1A alone and R1B alone, we have a resistor that we calculated for the frequency, old gain over the new gain, and then the resistor over 1 minus the new gain over the old gain. That's our resistor B. So you design for the Q factor and the frequency like you did in the beginning, and then you just split the input resistor into two resistors designing for a new gain. So as long as the gain of the amplifier is greater than the gain that you want, you can do this using a voltage divider. So the next problem that we are going to look at is going to include these two input resistors. So R1 is now split into R1A and R1B, which is there to fix the gain. This RC network is for the frequency and RA and RB is for the Q factor. So, problem two, design free band pass filters of 4 kHz, 6 kHz and 8 kHz. Design with a bandwidth of 100 Hz and a final gain of 20 dB. Use 10 nanofarad caps, calculate the required components and simulate the problem. Um, Use the table to order these two designs and do them um, all three basically at the same time. Tabulate everything that you are doing. So I'm going to give you a couple of moments, pause the video, and when you're finished, we can go on to the solution. Right. So I tabulated everything. So first column is the frequency that we want, then the bandwidth, and from the frequency and the bandwidth we can calculate our Q factors. Okay, so we have a 40, 60, and 80. With the frequency and a choice of a capacitor of 10 nanofarads, we can calculate the resistor value. So E192, so 5.62, 3.74, and 2.8 kilo ohm. So this is the R value for each one of these filters. So from the Q factor, we get the gain, and we can find the gain for each, and you'll see that each one of these is very close to 4. So this is almost resonating or being an oscillator. And with our K value, we can choose all our RA values as 1K and we find our RB values. And you'll see that this is 2.94, but the last two is very close to the same value. And for E192s, we don't have anything closer to 2.98 as is um, so and if this becomes larger than 3k it will be oscillator okay so these two we will have the same q um, with resistors and we will actually see that in the results okay so from this since we have k we can calculate the gain of each so 
almost 200 for both of these and if we want a gain of 20 decibels that's 10 volt per volt and we can just plug in the old gain and the new gain and the resistor that we got here up top into our equations or you can do it with a voltage divider if you want to go through a lot of lot of effort you can do it from that side and we get our um, 1a and 1b values for our resistors so you can pause this and see if you got the same values and then i will jump into the simulation Alright, so I set these up, all three having the same input signal, and I'm first going to do a boat plot. If you have a lot of filters to design like this, you can always use an Excel spreadsheet to do your designs um, quick and efficiently. Um, but yeah, let's run this. And... And there is our first output here at V1, and that is sitting at 1, 2, 3, 4 kilohertz. The second one to on, and the third one to on. Okay, so due to the components picking um, values, these will not be exactly where you want them, so further tweaking and fine tuning may be needed so these are sitting at about 18 dbs this one is closer to 20 this one is more towards 19 and that is due to the choosing of standard components but they are quite spot on on the values where we want them so there is our free band pass filters with a queue of 100 each and Let's see how this operates with in transient conditions. So let's set this up as for a transient response. Let's step three frequency values. So I'm going to run through for V in a four, a six, and eight kilohertz signal. Um, Let's put this on a sign, 100 millivolts in, and a frequency of F. Right, so if we run this as a transient, a lot of stuff will happen. So if we double click here on V1, 100 millivolts bec almost becomes 1 volt output, so gain of gain of 10 and you will see that the other two frequencies is suppressed we look at the second one the higher frequency is passing but our gain was a bit less here but the other frequencies is suppressed and also with the last one the higher frequency is passing and the lower frequencies is not passing Right, so we can see this in FFT. Um, the two lower frequencies is being suppressed, and the higher one is is passing through. And if we take the middle one, and we do FFT, we'll see that. Oh, that's the first one. Sorry. That this one is being boosted and those two are being suppressed. And for the middle one. The middle one is boosted and the other two is being suppressed. So yeah, I think these bandpass filters are working quite nicely. And that is bandpass filter design for the KRC filter. Thank you for watching.